Good morning, students. I'm Mr. Buscarini, and for today's lesson, we're going to talk about significant digits. As a follow-up from the previous lesson, when we talked about scientific notation, I thought it was important also to see how we can represent numbers with the correct number of digits. Uh, as I said, as a follow-up from the previous lesson, we saw that in physics, we handle more often than not numbers which are really, really big or extremely small. And we know that we can handle them better if we transform these numbers into scientific notation. But on the other hand, even when you do that, you might find yourself with a huge amount of digits. And maybe they're not all important. So our first step will be also to see uh, how we can distinguish between digits which are important and those which are, well, less important. But let's talk a little bit about rounding up. Uh, as you know very well, there are some numbers which have an infinite number of digits. And two of them are very, very familiar to um, math students. The first one is pi. As you more, more often, you just write it as 3.14. If you type pi on your calculator, you might come out with other digits, but actually the number of digits of uh, pi never ends. The same applies if you do the square root of many numbers, including 2. The square root of 2 can be rounded up to 1.41, but in reality, it has an infinite number of uh, digits. So either you choose to represent this number this way, just writing pi or square root of 2, or if you use the actual number, in order to do calculation, you need to round up. And as I told you, our first step will be to see uh, which digits are important, because we'll see in a number uh, not always all the digits are important. But let, let's see a couple of examples here. We have two measurements. A measurement, of, a measurement of length and a measurement of time. So let's imagine we're measuring a length of 2.54 centimeters, which by the way is exactly one inch. Now let's imagine also that I'm going to ask you, okay, can you tell me how many meters is this number? And you 0 0.0254 meters. But at this point, you, I must point out that this number has three digits, while this one has five digits. So you might wonder, okay, do, do I have some extra information? Do these two extra digits add information, knowledge about the value of this measurement? So let's imagine we measured also a time, 1,700 seconds. And again, let's imagine I'm going to ask you, okay, but how many milliseconds is that? You were right that this is 3,700,000 milliseconds. And as you can see, you start with a number with four digits. You end up with a number of seven digits. Are these three extra digits at the end adding information about the number? So in this context, we have uh, the term significant digits. So what are significant digits? We're going to say, and this is not by any means the official definition, but let's see, it's, it's going to be the definition that is valid for us. So in a number, we will say that a digit is significant if it gives information about the value of a number. And as we'll see in a few seconds, not every digit in a number is significant. Or we can say not all digits are created equal. There's actually one type of digit which more often than not does not add information. So what are the rules to decide if some digits are significant and which are not. Now, as you can see, this is going to be a very dense slide with a lot of information. There's no examples here. So I really want you to uh, read carefully these um, rules, and then we're going to apply them in the next slide. So let's start with the first one. And all non-zero digits, so any zero from one to nine is considered significant. So if you have a number with Digits which are only 1 to 9 are all significant. How about zeros? See, see, see uh, I told you uh, that zeros, unfortunately, they, they are not as important, or, well, say, 
uh, were discriminated a little bit with respect to non-zero digits. So let's see rules to, from two to four. Starting with rule two. So what we, we have here, zeros placed before other digits are not significant. And I hope you understand what I mean here. For instance, if you have something like 0, 0.00 events, some other digits, those zeros before are not significant. Let's see number three. Zeros placed between other digits are significant. Let's imagine I tell you 101, uh, that zero in between is definitely significant. How about zeros placed uh, after other digits? And here is a little bit of controversy. We're going to stick only to decimal zeros. Decimal zeros placed after other digits are considered significant. Okay, but this four rules will be more clear once we go to the examples. So here are, we have four examples, four numbers, by the way, scientific notation. And my question for you is how many significant digits? Actually, from now on, I will um, just write SD as significant digits. Do these numbers have? And as I did before, I'm going to ask you just to pause a few seconds in this video, just to try to figure out yourself uh, and try to uh, understand how many significant digit, digits do these numbers have. So here's our solution. Let's start with the first number. 0 0.00516. This has three significant digits. If you remember rule number two, zero placed before other digits are non-significant. So the only significant digits are 516. How about the second number? This one has six between the others. How about this one? Okay, now here's the case. When you have a number and you have zeros after other digits, but before the numbers are non significant. So this number has only two significant digits. And finally, here we have one zero after the decimal point. So this zero is significant, is giving relevant information. So this number has four significant digits. So now we know how to distinguish between significant digits and non-significant digits. At this point, we're ready to see the rules for rounding up. If you remember at the beginning of this video, we have seen the cases of pi and the square root of 2. But just to, uh, for us, I'm going to use another quantity. We're going to use the speed of light in vacuum. This number is going to pop up a lot during our physics classes. Now, the, the speed of light in vacuum is a physical constant, is a very important physical constant, is represented normally with a small letter c, and if you remember the famous Einstein's formula, E equals mc squared, uh, that's the c, that's the c here. And this is the number, um, 299,792,458,000,000. Meters seconds to the minus one. If you remember, this is the more correct way to write meters over second. This number, written full, has nine significant digits. Now, most of the times, we're not going to use this number with all its digits, okay? So we need to see how we can round it up. Our first step will be to write this number in scientific notation, which you can see right here. C is 2.9979.2458 times 10 to the 8 meters seconds to the minus 1. As you can see, writing this number in significant notation hasn't really shortened it because all these digits are significant. But most of the times, we want to have less digits. So let's see what, we can, what happens when we round up. So let's imagine we just want to take, this one has nine significant digits. Let's imagine I want to write this with eight significant digits. So um, what we have, when you take away a digit which is bigger, the next digit has to be increased by one. So this five will not surprisingly become a six. So let's see what is the result. And here we are, just a second same number but with eight significant digits. 
What if we want to round up even more? Let's imagine we want to cut it here. So we want to have the speed of light with seven significant digits. Well, again, what digit is this? This is a five. The same rule applies. The next digit has to be increased by one. So, not surprisingly, this is the number we're going to end up with. And you can continue this exercise on your own. You can try to figure out how does the speed of light look like if you have six significant digits, three significant digits, and so on. Uh, we're going to see more examples in class, but that's all for today. Goodbye from Mr. Boscarini.